Hello everyone, welcome back to Paradise, the official Parramatta Eels podcast. Before we get started, just want to say a quick shout out to our sponsor, Sport Bible Australia. So thank you to you guys. I'm back here on the blue couch with the infamous Olin Tackers. Well, welcome, welcome back to you. You know, you're we haven't filmed in ages because you know you've had you've been all you've been away, ain't you? Yeah, yeah, I've been on a bit of a break. It's been um a difficult season for me yeah. with with a bunch of injuries and um I think Heading into the finals, I needed to, to get away and, and really reassess my season and um, the things that I need to do. Uh, so you, took a, little, the you took a little break and you just went away and concentrated, focused on your like mental health and all of that kind of stuff? Yeah, yeah, exactly right. I needed to kind of get my, spells, uh, my head in the right space to be able to come back and try and provide something in the final weeks of, of the season for the team if, if, uh, if they need me. So yeah. elbow is kind of, kind of getting a bit better, yeah. but... Um, yeah, I might be able to play next week against Penrith. Hopefully we get the win on Friday and Ooh, yep. um, then I can be back for that and we'll be playing for our season. But Perfect. yeah, it's going not too bad, mate. Amazing. And for the people that are going to drop in the comments, why aren't you training? Um, did you just, did you guys have a, oh, you had a hard session today? Or yeah, was I was just saying to you before, you know, although I'd love to be training 24 hours a day, I actually can't do it for my own uh, physical well-being. That's so a shame, man. We need to recover. Mm. And um, yeah, we do this outside of training hours. You know, we just trained before for... Eight hour day, just about. So, um, the boys are ready to go and they're playing. And I've been injured most of the time anyway. So, yeah. um, gives me something to do on the side. You know what I mean? Yeah, hundred percent. And the Matildas, have you been watching Matildas at all, mate? Are was, you a bit of a are you a, are you a converted like soccer fan now? Somewhat, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah somewhat. Um, I think it's been really good. You know, it's it's great to see uh, the the girls going really well, particularly because we're the host nation, and particularly because if we win, then we get. A public holiday. I think that's the only reason why everyone wants them to win, isn't it? Because yeah. I, obviously I'm English, so it's England v Australia. I'm, I'm in between <laughs> at the moment. A lot of people are saying, who should I be supporting? But my heart kind of says um, Matildas, but my head says... But do you uh, want a public holiday? I do want a public yeah, holiday. So, so you're on Matildas. Yeah, no. Did you see the video of the flight where everyone was watching the Matildas play? Yes, and there was one dude that was watching Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Something like that? Yeah, yeah, Lord of the Rings. Lord I mean, if it's gonna, if you're gonna watch one film, it probably should be <laughs> Lord oh. of the Rings. I, I'll give him a slide pass for that. Yeah, yeah, and it's pretty tactical because everyone else is watching it anyway, so he gets the best of both worlds. Yeah, exactly. So you know, shout, shout out to that one guy that was watching the Lord of the Rings. But <laughs> yeah, really the, that, that just tells you how important their Matildas are. People are watching it on the plane. People are watching it everywhere. There's people watching it all over the world. And this World Cup, really in general, has been you know really really good from. Uh, footballer perspective, from a consumer perspective, from all round, I think it's done huge things for the game. Um, mm -hmm. But we do have a special guest. Do you want to intro? Yeah, yeah, the special guest. So he debuted in 2015 for the Brisbane Broncos. Um, played in the grand final, 2015 grand final against the North Queensland Cowboys. He's played 170 NRL games, three State of Origin games for Queensland, unfortunately, <laughs> and eight international appearances for. For Tonga, everyone, Joe Fangiawi. Thanks for having me. How you doing, bro? How you Hi. been? How you doing? How you feeling? I'm good, man. It's been a good week. Um, obviously, coming off a disappointing loss. Um, but, you know, Brad, coaching staff, the leaders in our group, they're really um, up in spirit and they make sure all the boys have the right mindset leading into this week. So it's been a pretty good week for us. So you've obviously transitioned newly to the team from Tigers. How's that transition period been from you from Tigers to Para? Obviously been... Yeah, it's been good. You know, obviously winning helps. Yeah, you know, I came came to the Eels and uh, we won five on the trot. So I think that, that's what made it a lot easier for me. Mm -hmm. um, so. It was a slow start though to my Parramatta Eels um, career. Obviously done my calf 10 minutes into my debut, but, you know, I was just happy to be here, happy to help out where I could before I get on the field. And um, great, great group of boys, great leaders in our group that, um, you know, helped, helped make my transition a lot better. Is there anyone who you've taken a particular shine to since you've gotten in, or is there anyone in the group who's surprised you in any way? Yeah, um, a lot of them. You know, you know, Lenny, you know the most. Uh, they're a great group of boys. You know, just always having fun. I think um, the biggest one is probably Gutso. You know, just how he gets among the boys. You know, as a mm. captain, you know, some um, I've had a couple of captains that are, um, you know, they're kind of away from the group. You know. Being a leader, it's, it's a lonely place, but he's, he likes to be amongst it and leads by his, um, his actions. And 
Yeah, he's usually the loudest one in the shed. So. <laughs> yeah, he is. I can, I can testify to that. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> he looks like that. Talk to us. I want to, you know, take a little bit of rewind at that um, a grand final 2015. What was I like to play in? It's obviously a monumental moment in the rugby league history, but what was it like to play in? Yeah, it didn't really um, hit me too much, you know. Um, like the experience as a, as, a, as, a, as a young forward or young player coming through the system, you know, you're just happy to be there every game of your debut year. And, you know, I kind of took it for granted um, going into that grand final. You know, I thought we were just going to be there every year, you know, with my first year in, in the NRL and we had a great side. Um, yeah, and I just, I wish I could take take it back and soak it, it all in. So now, good in the know, moment. Just, it was a really good side. I mean, it's just another story to tell. Yeah. yeah. How long did you play in that grand final? 15 year, minutes each side. You know, Wayne was a simple coach. Um, he coached me simple. He said, just go hard for 15 minutes each side of the half and get off. Like, that's what I did. I just went hard. <laughs> what, what, what was the that's score it. when you, you left the field? It was yeah. still close. I remember they scored. We scored the first try. They scored two um, off a of scrum. And I think James Tamo scored off like a under the sticks. Yeah, crash, yeah. So it was, um, I think it would have been 6-10 maybe or 6-12. So it was still a close game, but I was... Honestly, I can't remember it. You like can't it was remember. that loud. Um, oh. I just hit, I just could just remember Darius screaming at me the whole whole time because he's the only voice you could hear on the field, um, telling me get in position and stuff. But so yeah. you can't remember the moment, the try, the goal. Oh, I do remember you that remember again. That I was happening? on the bench. <laughs> I mean, yeah. man, it was a funny story about that. Eh? Like me and Cody, you know, it was twenty. Cody and Karima, sorry, we yeah. both debuted the same game that year. And um, we made it all the way to the finals and we're talking about, oh, we might, we might win a ring in our, our debut year. And 20 seconds to go, me and Cody are sitting next to each other on the bench, jumping up and down. <laughs> and then we look back and Felty scores in the corner. Oh, so my God. Was, <sighs> yeah, it was heartbreaking. And obviously I felt for Justin Hodges. He was our, he was our skip. It was his last year and yeah. it would have been a good way to go out. But, you know, yeah. if anyone's going to win it like that, it's JT. I felt for, I don't mean to bring it up again, but Ben Hunt. Oh, yeah. Like Ooh, this season yeah. that he had. That year was unbelievable, and then JT misses the goal. You get a, another yeah, yeah. crack at going back to win the game, and then he drops the ball. Mm. They kick the field goal. Like, man, that must have been so heartbreaking. Yeah, a lot of people bring that up, and I don't. I don't really agree on like you know that criticism. Mm. Obviously, he catches the ball there. It's mm. a different game, but mm. I thought we had the game won and done. You know. Um, a lot of diff okay. different factors. And yeah. your, your background, um, Tongan, you speak a, a bit of Tongan? No, I don't speak too much, man. Obviously, growing up away from Tonga, yeah. uh, my parents split when I was young. You know, I was raised with my stepmom. Um, didn't really get to speak much Tongan at home. Mm -hmm. My dad really wanted us to, but we lived in Australia. And, yeah, know, of yeah. course. But um, Were they super proud of you when you, you know, obviously made your debut for Tonga, played for Tonga a few times? Yeah. What, was, what was that like for the family? Um, all of them, yeah, especially my grandparents, you know, back home in New Zealand. Um, they pretty much raised me and my brothers and sisters and uh, they were just really excited for me, you know, I get to experience like what it's like to be in a Tongan camp around a Tongan, vi in a Tong Tongan environment. And I think it was just a group of boys that, you know, in that Tongan team made it, made it something special. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of them, you know, were in their primes and chose to play for Tonga. So it was a great experience learning from them. Were you part of the team that beat Australia? Yeah, yeah, you oh, were. I was part of the team that got flogged by Australia too. <laughs> so had both sides before, yeah, yeah. Let's not mention that. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we, yeah, we got flogged by Australia the first Test match. Um, it was like thirty-six to six. Yeah, and then we made a vow, like at the end of the game, you know, if we ever get our chance again, you know, we got to make it worth it. Like, yeah, make, make all this the noise that we're making, gotta make it all worth it, you know. And so this, the next camp we had, yeah, was just it was just a great experience. Yeah, the, the Australian team they loved it too because a lot of the Tongan fans are really passionate. And mm -hmm. A lot of them were singing the Australian anthem before the game too. So, Yeah, they're probably the most passionate nation, I yeah. think, the fans for Tonga. I've yeah. seen them go off before the Samoa's game. Pretty, Everyone has a flag. Yeah, they're up there Samoa's now. Samoa's a bit more. I think Samoa's probably just takes it a little bit over Tonga. Yeah. In terms of passion, I felt that passion, trust me, when um mm. when I started going at them in the, in the, World Cup, the Rugby League World Cup. Yeah, well, I did like before. The, the Tongan fans, you know, a lot of people don't really realise it's not – like they're not just celebrating because it's like the Tonga Rugby League. They're just celebrating because it's Tonga. Yeah. You know, anything, anything, anything to do with Tonga, you know, it doesn't matter. Win or lose, they're just happy. Yeah, they're just happy to see it on the big stage. I want to talk about your Queensland, um, you know, appearances. So what was that like playing in State of Origin? Yeah, it was man the best feeling ever. You know, um, you know, my background. I was I, I was born in New Zealand. Mm. Uh, I didn't really fall in love with the game until I moved here when I was ten. 
And then I come through the system and just watching footy all the time, you know, Queensland were dominating in that, in that era. And, that, and I just from there, I just wanted to always be a Queenslander, play for Queensland. And, you know, obviously when you make junior reps, you get a little bit of taste of it. But then, and when it comes to the real, real thing, you know, it's just, it's an amazing camp to be a part of, you know, such a rich culture in, in the Queensland um, culture. And obviously New South Wales have their thoughts on it too, but. Yeah, yeah we spoke about it before, didn't we? It's like how much yeah. it kind of means to Queenslanders yeah. in comparison to. Yeah, it still means a lot. It still means a lot. But I feel like like they. (laughs) I'm just saying. I feel like it's ingrained into them from the young age. We're we're bouncing back next year. Yeah, next year we got them. Yeah. Yeah. So did you get to choose to play for Queensland then? Because you're born in Auckland. You come. You lived in Sydney first, did you? Yeah. No, I I moved. I moved to um, uh, Ipswich first. Ipswich. All right. So So because you played your first. All my junior reps there. Junior reps and everything. So I had to tick Queensland. So obviously everyone around at the times real passionate Queensland supporters. So could you shift to play for New Zealand too if you wanted to? Um, maybe. Honestly, I don't know how that works. Yeah, yeah. Nah. Maybe, but you could I play for never. anyone. Eh? Well, <laughs> interesting. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. World card. <laughs> yeah. World card. Love that. And uh, away yeah. from uh, footy, like, what do you what do you like to do in your in your spare time? You know, what you do away from the game. Mm. Oh well, now these days, obviously, being at home, father of three. You know, my partner Sophie and I. Uh, we got three under three, so it's that's, wow, that's, that's my a, hobby. Yeah, that's a house. That's a, <laughs> yeah, well, that's a full-time house. job. Yeah, in yeah, itself for sure. You know, being being a parent, being a father, it comes with different roles. You know, one day, you know, you're the judge. The next day, you're, you're dressed up as a bloody Cinderella. So <laughs> you do it all. It keeps you busy, man. He's a good dad, Joff. Uh, he brought in his son for physio one day, and oh really? Um, what was he doing? He kept playing the same song mm. over and over again. Yeah. But then when you'd stop it. He'd have a little tantrum. Oh, mm. really? Joff's like, no. I, I told Joff he has to put it as his try score and something. Yeah. So really? What song is it? Game. Pump it up. That, you got to pump it up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he loves that one. Yeah, that's a tune. Kept playing it. He yeah. knew how to find it. You just mm. open the phone up and then he just straight away music app, straight mm. away knew the picture or something. Eh? Oh. Probably not a good thing to be <laughs> proud of. but uh. <laughs> Yeah, no. Nah. So you mentioned your, your partner, Sophie. Mm-hmm. And... Um, when I was thinking about some things to talk about with you on this podcast, you mentioned that she actually had breast cancer, I think it was a few years back. So yeah. um, obviously wanted to get your permission to talk about it here. So thanks for that. Um, yeah, just just tell us a little bit. How how was that? Like when you found out, like what, what, was, what was it all about? Yeah, so like I'll go to back to the start, you know, when, we, when she realised there was something wrong with her left, uh, sorry, her right breast, she felt a little lump. And then obviously from there when it got tested on, Doctors came back, you know, broke the news to us in front of her parents. And, you know, it was a, for, for me, like watching her take the news, it was like really surprising for me to see how she reacted, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, as all all pre- um, breast cancer, any kind of cancer survivors, you know, they're all warriors, you know. And I just never got to see that side of her. Yeah. You know, the way she would just deal with it, you know, they kind of just asked her to either get rid of the breast or go for chemo. Hopefully it shrinks down and. She kind of said, nah, get it off me. I don't want it done. And it was just the quickest decision I've seen her, like the toughest one that I've mm-hmm. seen her make ever. And we're, we've been together for for a long time, but it's always been about like my career and my footy and mm-hmm. never got to really see her make different kind of decisions like that. And, you know, I was just a, really proud of how she handled it. And obviously she's handling it now. And yeah, we, I guess we just kind of moved on from all of it. Yeah. So after... She had the tissue removed. Mm-hmm. Was it all clear after that? Like, how long did it take to? Well, it was about a, a year of treatment, to be honest. Um, she had the surgery done, um, but she still had to go through all the steps, you know, chemo, radiation, mm-hmm. and all that stuff. And they're, they're, I think some of them can go from 12 to 14 weeks long, and then you've got to wait for radi- radiation, and they, that goes for however long. And then you still got checkups to do, and comes with all these other problems that, you know, I probably won't talk about, but you know they they go for a lot, and and I, I think for any partner that's like um, watching their partner go through something like that, it's the hardest thing in the world, you know. You, sure, you feel a bit helpless. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Mm. You feel like you can't mm. can't really do so much. So she's all good now, though. All clear. She's all good now. Obviously, yeah. has to check in now and now and then with the doctors, but um, I think it's just up to the doctor and the patient and how frequent that is. Mm. Yeah, nice. Um, I think. Like most times when you go through difficult things in life, you you end up growing quite a bit mm. as, as a person. and As a couple it, as well. Yeah. yeah, it adjusts your perspective quite a bit, you know. Mm. I think 
post-traumatic growth is what they call it. Yeah. Do you find yourself looking at the world from a different perspective after what you've gone through? Yeah, bro. Uh, heaps different, you know, especially after like after having kids as well. Mm. You know, and it kind of just – but it kind of just all like hit us all at once, you know, 23-year-olds running around going on benders and then yeah. one, one day, you know, we get some bad news about Sophie and yeah. how she got cancer and just all kind of crashes down on you and then – a couple of years later, you have kids, and it just all builds back up again. You know, the good starts following good, and yeah. you know, I think we're in, we're in the greatest space as a couple, as a family at the moment than we've ever been in. Yeah, nice man. Just got to keep letting the good times roll. Yeah, yeah how good. good. Yeah. We still got kids to look forward to, Alan. Yeah, so well, good. I'm older than him, and I've got no kids, so um, <laughs> I need to start. Man, you have one. I need to start working on it quick. Any um. Australian women, please slide <laughs> <them. laughs> Anyway, um, Joe, we, we hear you're a bit of a coffee connoisseur. What's your what's your go to coffee, man? I'm, uh, I wouldn't say that. I just I just like a really strong coffee, man. Uh, In the morning, tri- tri- as soon as you shot, wake up, triple bang? shot flat white, bro. That's triple me. Triple. That's true. And I'll get one 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 while I'm driving, and then one while I'm having like walking around here. Walking around, six shots straight away. So your average man can have about six shots of coffee. Your average man. <laughs> Is the average man, yeah, yeah, 40, 40 players aren't average men. You know? <laughs> yeah, 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 no, uh, he, yeah, yeah. He's certainly no average man. You should see this bloke with his rig. <laughs> with his oh, yeah, I'm hearing oh, you, and, you and Madison are competing for the, who's got the best no, rig. No, that's all matter, man. That's all matter. Has he got I a just, better rig than matter? <sighs> they're, they're different shapes. Yeah. But I, I personally <laughs> like Joe's rig better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. What, personally, what? yeah. Is yeah. it more defined? It's more... Shaped in the way that you Yeah, I don't know. It's just the the shape <laughs> it's just a bit more masculine, mate. I don't know. They're yeah. both very masculine. Yeah, no, no. Mano yeah. has like a lot of tan, he puts a lot of work yeah. into it yeah, and stuff. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, nah, the, the natural the natural physique of, of Joe. Who do you reckon has the best rig you've ever played with? So many. Far out. Um <laughs> not, <laughs> not many. <laughs> bro, Alex Twelve's up there. Alex Twelve. Um bro, Dylan Brown's up there. Yeah, man, Dylan Especially Brown. Especially like all the training he's been doing. Dylan has yeah. that that real small waist, mm, yeah, and then the broad waist. shoulders, yeah, and it just has that that perfect V, the v shape yeah. to it. Yeah, you know, you can't really. If you, I'm you, very, you I'm very envious. Or you don't. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, I'm very envious. My how, waist is. How do you like, go about getting fat. a V? Oh, I don't know, man. It's just genetics, made in the kitchen. You know? <laughs> it's made in the kitchen. Honestly. All that is your diet. What's your diet like? Is your diet pretty decent? It's oh, it's not the oh, like it's not the best. Like I'm not like <laughs> I don't count like carbs and calories and stuff. But I just. I get sent out some meals mm. and yeah, nice. I just follow that. And whatever the missus cook, I'll probably just eat the leftovers. <laughs> Shout out to Soph. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She doesn't cook much too. So. Oh. <laughs> oh, wow. Chuck her over the have to say that. But yeah. <laughs> she, she needs to see that. <laughs> yeah, but Matt, Matt, Matt's diet's pretty good. He was talk, you were speaking about his diet when he came on, wasn't he? Like his diet's pretty... Like yeah, he eats a lot very clean. Eats. Yeah, yeah. I've seen follow his, his Instagram? His stories as well, yeah, like yeah. Uh, popping up a couple of times, like, Matt, send me that recipe, man, you know? So. Very clean. He doesn't eat bread. He only eats whole grains, and, mm. um, meat, things like that. He never eats anything out of a package. Wow. Um, That's probably where we're, I'm going wrong. Low fat. <laughs> lots that, of salad every meal. You should see these. He he so has he does ha- has a salad bowl. I don't understand how food. people eat that much like, salad because salad just never fills me up. Oh, this is all yeah, hungry man. afterwards. Yeah, but it's healthy, bro. Health food's not supposed yeah. to taste good. I have salad all the time. It's not supposed to taste nice? Nah, <laughs> nah. nah it's not supposed to taste nice. Just trust that well. it's doing the right What's your food? favorite food then? My favorite food? Oh, it'd be a Nigerian just called jollof rice. You guys tried Nigerian food before? Nah, nah, nah. Oh, but I do I'd have to bring it. it in one time for the boys. Yeah. It's, uh, jollof rice. Jollof rice is called. People with the, if you're from. Jollof for Joffa. Joffa, Joffa. Yeah. yeah, I'll bring it in. It's so like it's a Nigerian rice. Food. It's like rice, like a red type of rice yeah. uh, mixed with like stew and chicken and all that yeah. kind of stuff. Like, so do you just have that? Um, is it like fuf- uh, fufu? Yeah, we have fufu. We call it we call it eba. So you can oh, like yeah. you kind of eat it with your hands. You can eat it with fork. Whatever. I wanna you want to try that. Sticky, want to try that like, as well? Soup, that sticky the, soup. Like you want to try that? Is it igusi or something? Yeah, igusi soup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. We've I want to try that. I'll be so. It'll be funny to do some content. Yeah, yeah right. bringing like a Nigerian. Isn't it real, is it real Nigerian spicy food? or something? Nigerian can be, food? can be, can but be. you can turn it down where to where it's like you know you can eat it and stuff. So. Is it the mm. meat's really well done? Oh uh, yeah, kind of. Yeah, it can be a bit chewy. Okay, okay. So we'll, we'll have a, maybe keen. we'll do a content day chess where we bring or I'll bring in like all Nigerian food and then like we have yeah, to learn yeah. to taste it. I'm keen. Yeah, I want to try anything. I'll, I'll okay. try anything. Okay, six. Let's move. Let's move on to the six again segment. Yeah. So we we can the ask fans. Q&A, sorry. You can still send so, them in. 
but they won't be featured. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> joking. Get the best one. We'll pick out the best one. Yeah, so there was a common theme. All the fans kept asking the same questions. So we just thought we'd, we'd go six again and ask the same six questions that kind of just kept coming up all the time. So mm. um, the first one, Joffa, who's the biggest pest in the team? Right, there's a couple. Reggie's up there. Yeah. Definitely Reggie. <laughs> What's Reggie do to, to pest you? No, it's not so much me. I can just see him. Everyone. Everywhere, you know. Yeah. But um, Maddo, Maddo's up there. <laughs> Maddo's up there Maddo's as well. Up oh, there. really? Yeah. Maddo's a funny pest. Though. Yeah. Uh, funny yeah. pest. He does it to get the NL up. Yeah, the NL. Yeah, 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 exactly right. Yeah, yeah, I, like that. I like that. All right. All-time favorite movie? Yeah. Step Brothers is up there. Step Brothers? I can't choose one, bro. Decent. Step Brothers is a good one. Step so Brothers like and Ferrell. Friday. You ever watch Friday? Friday, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 that was just on replay. Yeah, you know, like you know all the words of that one. That, yeah. that I'm, kind of a, one. I'm a massive Will Ferrell fan. I can quote most of his most movies. of his movies. Really? Yeah, me and Reg sit in there all, all day <laughs> quoting his movies. I can actually picture that too. <laughs> That'd be funny. To like, get, luckily, to all the boys kind of get around it too. Yeah, like, yeah. I, like I just spit things out of my mouth, talking then, shit. And then everyone kind of look around. Everyone kind of jumps on. Yeah. Me, so. <laughs> okay, so you're not by yourself. No, yeah, that. yeah, hundred percent. That's decent. Um, if you could be trapped on an island with anyone in the team, mm. who would it be, and why? Probably Micah, because I know he'll go good there. Yeah, <laughs> I trust. <laughs> I trust his instincts, and yeah, yeah, hundred. Yeah. I think that's probably a. And he a just good seems choice. like he's always happy as well. Yeah. I just feel like he he probably wouldn't be able to make him mad on there. You know. Seems like a happy bloke. Yeah. Micah. Yeah. yeah, no, I, I like that one. If you could be anyone in the world for a day, mm. who would it be? LeBron. LeBron, LeBron James. LeBron James. LeBron James. Man, that guy, oh, he's the man. He is. Who would you be? We, we, you haven't, we haven't asked you, but I'm curious to know who you would be. <clears throat> I was going through this with Chesh, actually, because yeah. when I was coming up with the questions, I explained to her, it'd be Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> what the? Okay, no, I hear it. But, what, but what's your reasoning behind it? Because he only dates girls that are below 25. Oh, no, I'm I'm right. <laughs> Cut that. <Yeah>. Cut that <laughs> out. <laughs> oh my God, that's a good one. That's such a good one as well. George, I love you, babe. Oh, uh, wow. he does. Nah, I think, it's, well, his rule is like once they get past what, what, 25. At 25, eh? Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. It's not because of that, it's because. It is. I'm a real movie buff. I'm a real movie buff. Yeah. And he's always been one of my favorite actors. He is the way actor. that he, he goes about his work, mm. it's just so... Him in uh, Wolf of Wall Street. Oh, yeah, un yeah. Unmatched. And yeah. actors are just such different people. Mm. It'd be like, I'd love to get inside of his mind mm. and just see how he thinks about things. Yeah. 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 It'd be really weird. Yeah, I, I still find, I find the concept of acting so strange that they can, because you know when you watch a movie, you don't realise that they've memorised this whole thing yeah, and yeah. this is not actually them. Mm. Like it's such a, such a Or even when skill. they go outside of the lines of something that like is just completely impromptu and, and it just adds what? to it. Yeah. And it's just, what a, what a masterpiece, you know? Yeah. Unbelievable. Um, any game day superstitions or rituals? No, I got none. Honestly, I, I did have a few when I was starting off. You know, you just mm. copy the older boys, but mm. you know, I just go with how I feel. You know? Just run out I'd of have bed. breakfast by myself, or wake up one day saying, um, "Probably have breakfast with my son." Mm. Nice. It all changes, you know. Mm. Yeah, nice. That's good. I, some boys don't speak to their family at all all day. <laughs> I used to alone. be like, I lock myself, <laughs> lock myself in the room, and you just play the game in your head the whole game, whole day, and you just get yeah, the yeah. Game I, drained. I've got um, I've got a question about that. In terms of you know when you because me when I was playing and you come off a loss right mm. and your moods just like for me it used to be when I when I come off a loss my mood for the whole night is just off. Mm. Obviously, when you've got family and stuff, you can't really do that. So what what's that like? How do you handle that? You know, um, you know, when you walk into the house, you just have to hang your That's it. your feelings at the door. You just know, leave you it at the door, just, yeah. Yeah, you come home and you you feel more well crap if you take it out on your your kids and your wife. And yeah, you know, there are some days where you, that your your partner will probably read the room and give you your space. But yeah, it's, I think uh, as a parent, you know, you can't just leave your feelings at the door. Mm. Yeah, love that. Hundred mm. percent. Last one. If you weren't playing rugby league professionally. What would you like to be doing? Man, I used to make music back in school. Ooh. So I think rapper. Nah, I was Coffee a bars. Auto tune singer, man. <laughs> auto tune singer, no um, way. Yeah, probably something in music, you know. It was a it was a passion of mine. Yeah. 
um, in high school. You know, I loved um, working with beats and recording my own tracks with my mates. Yeah, nice. Um, so some, something like that. Did yeah. you play any instruments? No, nah, I wasn't the best player, player of instruments. Yeah. Uh, my brother had that talent. Yeah, nice. He just pick up anything and play it. Yeah, really? So yeah, I wasn't given that talent. I'd love to learn to play guitar or something, A and B. Piano, something like that. Yeah, but piano. Then, piano is, I reckon piano, if you want to learn an like, instrument, it's piano. You reckon? Yeah. I can play like two songs on the piano. Can you? Yeah. I'll probably know one of them. <laughs> you know what I'm to Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I, got, I used to look up like smoke playing, on the water yeah, on the guitar. Like, yeah, everyone knows that. The, knows the those easy ones. tunes, but um, yeah, no, I, I would love to be able to play an instrument. But that is the end. Um, thank you guys for joining us. Joe, thank you for joining us. Lainey, we'll be back whenever you're ready. Um, yeah. Thank yep. you to our sponsors as well, Sports Bible. Make sure you like, comment, share, and we will see you guys next week. Hopefully. No, Laney's got Thought Train. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> thought Train for the week. Laney, take us away before. We were talking about the Matildas before, so I was thinking about it uh, throughout the week, um, and I was thinking we need to beat England in this game. So I'm going, we're going to win. Mary Fowler's going to score a goal because she's been on fire. Go, Mary. Go, the Matildas. Quote that one. Yeah. Make sure it comes out. And we'll see you guys next week. Oh,